Relationships, that bizarre melding of two human lives together. Sometimes it can make you feel on top of the world, euphoric, unbelievably grateful, but a lot of the time it can also make you feel extremely low, self-conscious, wondering why you got involved in it in the first place. By the end of this video, you're gonna have some golden nuggets of advice on how to protect yourself, and if you want one, how to create a healthy relationship that keeps both people in equilibrium. Hello, what's going on? It's Riyadh here. Welcome back to the channel. If you don't follow me on Instagram, this is going to be very new to you. Yes, girls, I am blonde. Now, this video is made in partnership with the amazing team at NCS. I've been working with them over the past few months to challenge myself to up my skills and to push myself to the boundaries of what I can achieve. Previously, I challenged myself to see if I could land a commercial jetliner. You can see that video by clicking the link below or I'll put a card here. But this time, we're talking about relationships because I went down to visit the NCS team in Sheffield for one of their course days where they were teaching a bunch of amazing young people about healthy relationships. And most of what we're speaking about today is what we learned on that day with NCS. Now, details are to come at the end of this video on how you can sign up to NCS's autumn program I tell you, it is something you need to do if you're between 15 and 17 and in the UK. My love life has not been perfect. It has been a journey. It has been a lot of downs, a lot of ups, and a lot of in between moments. And I've picked up so much stuff that I wish I had known before. So the first of five things to look out for when you head out into the world of dating, both on and offline, is ghosting. The practice of ending a personal relationship with someone by suddenly and without explanation withdrawing from communication. Sound familiar? Ghosting is never the answer and it never leaves someone feeling happy, appreciated and like they're wanted. No, no, it pretty much does the opposite of that. You start chatting, it's going well, it's going well, maybe you meet them in person, you keep chatting, you keep chatting and then out of nowhere, boom, they just stop replying. You chat back, you chat back, you respond, you try and get something out of them, nothing. They have simply vanished off the face of the earth. What is wrong with you? The funny thing about ghosting, although it has happened to me multiple times, I am also guilty of doing it to other people and it was only when I did it to someone else that I realized that's why they were doing it. And it was because I wasn't actually feeling it. In one case, I wasn't as attracted to the person as I wanted to be. In another situation, someone ghosted me because they didn't want to trail me down a garden path to a relationship that they didn't actually want. Sorry to say, ghosting is the coward's way of cutting off communication with someone that you kind of have already started a bond with. How do we stop it to prevent both sides from feeling awkward or unwanted? We simply be honest. <sighs> send them a nice text or give them a phone call and say, hey dude, look, I don't think that this is right because it doesn't feel right. And that is enough. You don't actually have to say any more than that. You can't force yourself to wanna to go there with someone, but what you can do and what you should do is be polite and don't leave them in the dark. That leads us nicely into number two. Be honest about what you want. A former flame of mine broke my heart without meaning to do that. We both wanted different things, but we didn't tell each other what those things were. Yes, okay, we both wanted companionship and a little bit of fun. In my head, we were building something that could potentially turn into a relationship, while in his head, the whole time, he knew that it was only fun. The whole time, the whole time, you would the whole time. So when naturally it came to the point of me going, hey, you wanna be my boyfriend? He was like, huh? What? And it all came tumbling down, leaving me as a complete mess and a state. I will never do that again. Moral of the story is always tell the other person what you're looking for, even if it's as simple as saying, I don't know what I'm looking for right now. And I might know in the, in the near future. Number three, the hot topic at the moment, consent. We always think of sexual consent and that is super, super important, but consent goes beyond the bedroom. It can be something as simple as giving consent for someone to take a picture of you and put it on Instagram or to go somewhere with someone. One thing I wish I knew about consent when I was first learning about all of this is that consent can change. You might say, yes, I will do that thing with you. And then halfway through doing that thing, you might go, actually, I don't want to do that thing anymore. That is totally fine. Even if you think that the person is going to get annoyed at you or feel disappointed in you or be angry, doesn't matter. 
you have a right to change your consent if you don't feel comfortable. And it's up to both people in the relationship, be it a one day relationship or a multi-year relationship, to communicate with each other about what the other person wants. Number four, mind games. This one is the most tricky one to understand because someone can be inadvertently playing mind games on you and not even knowing that they're doing it. It can involve manipulation, coercion, guilt tripping, but whatever it is, just remember it can be so subtle that it can just bubble underneath the surface, cleverly and delicately, sort of warping your sense of reality, which is very, very dangerous. So if a partner ever says to you, oh, if you don't do X, you'll make me feel Y, then question the validity of that statement. Is your action or inaction in a situation really going to make another person feel bad, upset, or angry? And if it does, is that your fault or is that their fault? This could be something like, well, if you don't give me your Facebook password and let me see your private messages, well, then you're just a bad boyfriend. Or what I've heard a couple of times is, if you don't work out and keep your body in check, well then, who knows, I might not be here for very long. If you feel like this may be happening, I suggest going and speaking to a friend, um, a counselor, a parent, anyone who might be able to check you back into reality and let you know if what's being said is actually a healthy conversation and a healthy relationship. And the fifth and final tip to a healthy relationship is ask yourself, are you ready for one? Living in a society like we do, it would be impossible not to be bombarded with romantic films and ads on TV that tell you that being in a relationship is the best thing in the world and parents who tell you, are you dating anyone? Of course, it's gonna seem like the right thing to do to chase down a partnership and to not be single. But I'll let you in on a secret. Being single is great. I'm not single anymore. I have a boyfriend. I love him. Josh, I love you. Okay. But the freedom and ability to explore yourself and other people while you're single is a wonderful thing. As long as you're surrounded by friends, family, work colleagues, uni people who get you and support you in a way a boyfriend or girlfriend could, then you're fine. So before you go out there and put your heart and someone else's heart on the line looking for a relationship, ask yourself those very, very important yet simple questions. Can you give a relationship the time it needs? Are you mentally ready for one? Are you comfortable letting another person super deep into your private life. Are you okay with telling your friends and family that you might not be there as much as you were before because now you've got another person in your life that you've got to give love, attention and affection to? And depending on the type of relationship you're looking for, polyamorous, monogamous, whatever it is, are you willing to commit to that with that person. And remember, it's not all serious. With a relationship comes a deep, compassionate, connected bond. You have someone that you can talk to about your issues and your worries 24 seven. They'll be your personal cheerleader to lift you up when you're feeling down and to make you feel like you can take on the world with whatever projects you're working on. And you know, you got snuggles and cuddles on tap. Please sign up for the NCS Autumn Program. It's happening very, very soon. Go and click in the link below. It is for 15 to 17 year olds based in the UK. If you want to upskill, if you want to challenge yourself, if you want to live away from home, if you want to boost that CV to help yourself get a nice job or a place in uni, then it is the thing that you need to do. And aside from all the learning and upskilling that you're going to do, you're probably going to make some lifelong friends on the program while you're doing it too. So sign up for the Autumn Program down below. Let me know how you get on. Please put down in the comments below if you've done NCS before, how you found it. Also, let me know your relationship advice. If you've been through any of the issues that I spoke about in this video, maybe we can help each other in the comments. We can answer each other's questions and just sort of have a little powwow down below. Make sure to hit subscribe and that bell for notifications when I put new videos up. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me there when I'm not on here and I will chat to you in a couple of days. Big love. Bye.